Are you afraid? Mirko spat out when he saw Maximus suddenly stop moving. He continued in a proud tone. You must have the strength of a heavenly emperor to kill my bodyguards. But you should know, there are plenty of heavenly emperors in the Blood God army. All the captains of the battalions are at that level. The Blood God army was divided into three battalions. Each one had a single commander and four deputy commanders. Each of the commanders was considered one of the powerhouses of the sect. Further, the total number of the three Blood Guard battalions exceeded 500, and 70% of the members came from Blood God Valley. By the standards of the Middle Region, such an army would be a truly formidable force, enough to annihilate a faction like the ancient divine sect. Therefore, Mirko was sure that Maximus would be intimidated by his words. He pointed at Maximus proudly, then uttered, Seeing that your strength is not bad, I will spare your life as long as you are willing to serve me. Maximus's eyes turned cold. He flicked his sleeve, and Mirko somersaulted a few times, all the while wheezing. When he landed on the ground with a thud, several of his teeth had been dislodged. You... You deserve to die, he seethed. Then he went on. You country bumpkin, I've already informed my big brother. All of you are finished. Maximus smiled, then mused. Ah, a deputy commander of the Blood God Army. I look forward to experiencing his strength. Sir, what do you mean by this? Nandrew spoke via voice transmission in puzzlement. Maximus replied in a faint voice. Nothing, really. I'm just getting restless. We've been sitting here for so long with no action. I'd like to compel the City Lord to come here. No doubt I can easily defeat him. After that, I'm sure the Blood God Emperor will be close behind. Of course, Maximus could also journey into the Blood God Valley himself, but he wanted to avoid it if he could. The Blood God Valley was the enemy's base camp. No one knew what kind of traps and trump cards were hidden there. If there were any formations, although Maximus still had the ability to break them, he would still be troubled. Rather than that, it was better to let the other party take the initiative to leave the Blood God Valley and come to him. Meanwhile, Mirko's brother had received his distress call. His expression suddenly darkened as he spat out, That bastard! All he does is cause trouble for me, and as a result, my reputation is in tatters. All I do is solve his petty problems. And meanwhile, his internal strength base hasn't improved at all. Then his eyes lit up. He had thought of a way to kill two birds with one stone. He went on. Ah, if I bring some troops with me and eradicate these heavenly generals who have offended Mirko... It will enhance my prestige, no doubt. However, just as Mirko's brother, whose name was Santo, was about to lead his subordinates from the second regime to Blood God City, a series of sharp noises suddenly rang out. Santo's eyes constricted as he thought aloud. That's the army summoning order, and it has been issued directly by the city lord. All commanders and deputy commanders must report to him. Compared to teaching Maximus a lesson, the City Lord's summoning order was clearly more important. Thus, Santo redirected his course to the City Lord's mansion. In the mansion, the Blood God City Lord stood on one side of his study in a crimson silk robe. A tall figure was sitting beside him. This was Bloodstar, one of the Blood God Warlord's top lieutenants. The three commanders and the twelve deputy commanders of the army filed in one after the other. As soon as they spotted the Blood Star Supreme Heavenly Emperor, they froze. They had originally thought the summons had come from the City Lord, but it seemed that in fact an emissary of the Valley Master had issued the call. Blood Star was one of the top powers in the Valley, 
and naturally not someone that citizens saw every day. For his part, Santo had never seen him before. But now, Santo and the others fell to their knees and bowed until their foreheads touched the ground. Greetings, Supreme Heavenly Emperor Bloodstar! They shouted with their eyes still directed at the floor. They would not dare to show any disrespect. At this point, the commanders had a moment to scan the room. Next to Bloodstar were three formidable experts at the Supreme Heavenly Emperor level. They were not as strong, but still intimidating. What had compelled the Blood God Valley to send such a retinue? The commanders now assumed the full complement of their forces would be mobilized. The Bloodstar Emperor began to explain in a booming voice. We are here to go after the two most wanted figures in the Blood God Valley, Nandru and Talita. They are not strong, as you know. However, they now have an expert by their side who is capable of tremendous destruction. We need everyone focused on this mission. His tone was calm, but it brought great pressure to everyone. One of the commanders spoke. Rest assured, my lord, we will catch these fugitives. At the same time, they were all deeply concerned by this revelation. It seemed Nandru and Talita now had a martial artist guiding them, who was a threat even to Bloodstar. When had such a figure appeared in their midst? How had he appeared? However, at this moment, the commanders naturally couldn't show any hesitation. Very good. If this mission is successfully completed, I will definitely report it to the Blood God Supreme Heavenly Emperor and give all of you numerous rewards, Bloodstar stated firmly. Numerous gasps rang out among the commanders, but Bloodstar ignored them and declared, Everyone, follow me! In an instant, he turned into a streak of rainbow light and rushed out of the City Lord's mansion. In the next moment, hundreds of rays of light in various red hues followed closely behind. Halfway through the journey, Santo realized that they were heading in the direction of Blood God City. Could it be that the missions set out by Bloodstar and his brother's distress call were somehow related? Santo thought to himself, Seems like I might be able to help Mirko with his dilemma after all. In the hotel, a smile appeared on Maximus's face. He mused aloud. They're here, and there are many formidable experts among them. Excellent. He had initially thought he would need to draw out the Blood God army before getting a chance to interface with the powerhouses of the Blood God Valley. Now, however, it seemed that would be unnecessary. Nandru's and Talita's expressions immediately turned stern. Then, bone-deep hatred flashed in their eyes. All of their family members in the Concordia family had been killed by the Blood God Valley higher-ups. At the same time, the other guests at the inn had deduced that something was amiss. They could feel the terrifying pressure emanating from Bloodstar and the others. They immediately felt a strong desire to flee the scene. It was not to be, however. Die! The Blood God City Lord screamed as he waved his palm. A red energy orb appeared out of nowhere in the void and landed on the escaping Heavenly Sovereigns. A ray of blood-red light and a rumbling sound echoed through the sky. The escapees had already vanished into thin air. What's going on? shouted a young woman. Heavens, it's the Blood God Army Commanders, another disciple uttered. And the Blood God City Lord, a third person observed. All the martial artists in the inn panicked. There was a formation covering this group of powerhouses, and it was both mysterious and deeply disturbing. For his part, at first, Mirko had felt satisfied that his brother had come to his rescue. But as he processed the formation in the sky, he was not foolish enough to think that this awesome show of force was for him alone. Surely, a more profound mission was afoot. Just then, 
the Blood Star Supreme Heavenly Emperor's voice rumbled through the air and entered everyone's ears. It is I, Blood Star, and I am here for one purpose only, to catch the fugitives Nandrew and Talita. Everyone else, stay very still and do not dare to interfere. If you do, you will be treated as accomplices of the escapees. Everyone was stunned. They had been impressed by the presence of the Blood God City Lord, but little did they know there was a far more powerful genius in their midst. Bloodstar was the number two figure of the Blood God Valley faction, second only to the Blood God Warlord himself. No one dared make a move, lest it be misperceived as an attempt to escape or aid the Concordia siblings. Bloodstar's eyes were fixed on a certain spot in the room. There, he had already sensed the location of the Blood God seal. He smiled coldly and thought to himself, You bastards are so calm, even now. Pathetic. Little do you know I have activated the Blood God Convergence Formation. You will never be able to escape. The City Lord could now feel that the Blood God Convergence Formation had been unleashed. He took a deep breath, then clenched his teeth and released his energy. Maximus quickly discovered the changes in the surrounding environment. Lord Flame, do you see anything? He queried. Lord Flame discoursed. This formation has a trapping function, but there is also something else, something dangerous. Maximus, you should only attack if it feels safe. Maximus narrowed his eyes. He naturally trusted Lord Flame's judgment. Immediately, he soared into the sky. Mirko was delighted to see this. The Great Blood Star had already advised that no one was to move a muscle. Yet Maximus had just made such an overt gesture. He was surely done for. However, in the next moment, Mirko widened his eyes. Naturally, because he had been with the Concordia siblings for so long, there were some traces of the Blood God Seal's aura on Maximus's body. As soon as he flew up, Bloodstar's eyes turned cold, and he commented, Ah, you've appeared! At this moment, Maximus was like a shining beacon amid a sea of darkness. Finally, the Blood God Valley was on the cusp of detaining the martial artist who had caused them so much trouble. Before Bloodstar could make his move, the three lower heavenly emperors who had sensed the aura of the Blood God seal on Maximus's body had already attacked, charging toward Maximus. Blood God, shocking palm! One shouted. Blood God, kick! Another screamed. Bloodthirsty wolf howl! cried a third. Three heaven-shaking, earth-shattering attacks flew toward Maximus at full force. Yet Maximus only let out a light snort. He opened up all his auras, then threw out a punch. His fist energy blotted out the sky and obscured the sun, then surged forth like a rushing river toward the low-grade heavenly emperors. Their attacks were immediately shattered. Such ordinary warriors didn't stand a chance, no matter their confidence and resources. The three large men fell from the sky, but before they could land on the ground, a huge crimson net condensed below them. They fell onto it softly, avoiding further injury. Bloodstar discoursed. Ah, you are as impressive as they say, but surely you did not kill Blood Sun and Blood Moon on your own. You must have had accomplices. Hand them over. I promise them a quick and merciful death. Maximus had a strange expression on his face. Even now, the Blood God Valley couldn't seem to accept that he was the lone assassin. He involuntarily let out a laugh. Bloodstar's face darkened when he saw Maximus's relaxed expression. Maximus went on to explain, I'm laughing because your faction still hasn't figured out who the murderer is. Bloodstar shot back. You're courting death. Out with it. 
Who were your accomplices? You couldn't have pulled this off on your own. His blood aura soared into the sky and transformed into a ferocious giant blood beast. The beast roared, then lunged at Maximus. At the same time, Santo and the others were still forming the Blood God Convergence Formation. They were only two to three minutes away from completing it. At that point, they would have the confidence to proceed with their plan to kill Maximus. In the face of Bloodstar's attack, Maximus didn't dare to be careless. This was a figure that was even stronger than Blood Sun and Blood Moon. Even his simplest technique could unleash unfathomable power. Flame God kill! Maximus shouted in a low voice. Surging divine essence shot out. He did not hold back his strength at all. The purple pattern flame divine spear appeared in his right hand and stabbed out like a dragon's tongue. The void trembled at this moment. The vast flaming tornado seemed to have condensed the Milky Way and it carried with it the very essence of fire. The blood-red giant beast roared and fiercely collided with the flame god kill. In an instant, a rumbling sound echoed throughout Blood God City. Even within the Blood God Valley, one could faintly hear the after effects. It was like the collision of two ancient ferocious beasts. The sky was filled with terrifying auras. In the hotel, everyone was stunned, especially those who had seen the conflict between Maximus and Mirko. Their eyes nearly popped out of their sockets. They had never thought that this man's strength could shake the heavens and earth to such an extent. He was actually able to fight Bloodstar without immediately falling into a disadvantageous position. Such strength was not something Santo could compare with. There was no way he could help his younger brother in this case. The gazes of many people descended onto Mirko, and their eyes flashed with pity. He'd actually provoked such a formidable enemy. What would come of this? But at this point, how would Mirko have the time to pay attention to the expressions of the others? He was so frightened, his body went limp, and he fell to the ground. When he came to... He was sweating out of utter fear. Then he gave himself a pep talk. No matter how strong this person is, there's no way he can defeat Bloodstar. That would just be impossible. I must wait quietly. Yes, I will be safe. Bloodstar's expression remained unchanged. At the level of Supreme Heavenly Emperor, he of course had a top-grade divine weapon. Strands of blood capillaries swept out, and soon, a huge crimson bell condensed in his hand. It floated in the air and continuously unleashed its blood-red power. Go! he shouted. The giant bell slammed forward, carrying the force of a mountain. Maximus struck out with his spear, instantly piercing the crimson mass. A tremendous force struck the spear, then flowed into Maximus's body, forcing him to retreat a few hundred feet. Only then did he manage to resist the power of the blood-red giant bell. Bloodstar coldly harumphed. The bell suddenly soared into the sky again, and then descended with an even more majestic force. Maximus took a deep breath. His body suddenly unleashed a force that caused the space to tremble. The sun-flaming body, divine flame battle body, and golden immortal physique were pushed to their limits. Break! Maximus shouted as he unleashed the purple pattern flame divine spear once again. The flame god kill technique was pushed to its limit. At this moment, the entire sky had turned into two zones. One zone was filled with crimson energy from top to bottom while the other world was filled with raging flames. Huh, this power, Bloodstar mused aloud. He was shocked. The strength Maximus had just displayed belonged to an upper grade Supreme Heavenly Emperor. And even at that echelon, it would have been considered exceptional. 
a strong killing intent suddenly rose in Bloodstar's heart. He thought to himself, With such power, if he unleashed some sort of sneak attack, it's absolutely plausible he could have killed Blood Sun and Blood Moon. He is indeed the murderer, and I guess he didn't have any accomplices. Up until now, Bloodstar had not used his divine body, nor his most powerful divine skill. He was reserving these for the accomplices he believed would appear at any moment. But now, there was no need to hold back anymore. Blood sinking, soul shattering palm, he screamed. Layers of blood colored radiance surged into the sky and then formed an orb of energy. Violet cloud divine arm, Maximus countered. His expression was stern. Waves of incomparably tyrannical energy surged out from his right arm, but he knew this would not be enough. Therefore, he quickly deployed the extreme violet skyfire, fusing it into his arm. Maximus seemed to have transformed into a giant demon at this moment. He waved his huge purple flaming arm and swept forward. An earth-shattering noise sounded. It was as if two huge stars had collided. Blood-colored storms and flaming hurricanes spread in all directions. The sun became dim and dull amid the tumult. Yet soon, it became clear that Maximus was the stronger martial artist. Under the shocked gaze of Bloodstar, his red energy orb was broken, and the purple light was sent flying toward him. Not good, he blurted. A crimson screen suddenly appeared in front of him as a shield. But as soon as it was hit by the purple light, it began to crack and shatter. Thinking fast, the city lord shouted, Our leader is in danger! It's time! He poured his energy into the crimson screen. Bloodstar's subordinates followed suit. Soon, it was stabilized again. Maximus's eyes flashed. He immediately increased his strength. Not only did he push the peak of the twelfth level of the Purple Cloud Divine Arm to the extreme, he also unleashed all the extreme violet skyfire. Finally, the blood red light screen shattered. The purple flame surged like a roaring river and drowned the five heavenly emperors, including Bloodstar. The commanders were all shocked and cried out in unison. Maximus walked forward with confidence, as if he were taking a stroll. Yet each step exerted tremendous pressure on the Blood God Army commanders. At this point, they were drenched in sweat. Their eyes were filled with fear as they looked at Maximus. Many began to retreat. However, when they realized there was no way out, many of them were moved to belligerence. Go to hell! A regiment commander shouted brazenly. However, his attacks were devoured by the purple flames before they could even get close to Maximus. In fact, much to his dismay, they increased the power of the purple flames greatly. The extreme violet sky fire was now able to devour the energy of a medium grade Supreme Heavenly Emperor's attack at will. Therefore, Maximus was excited rather than afraid, as the other commanders stalked toward him. He felt like a fierce wolf among a flock of sheep. As he pressed forward, a crimson barrier began to rise up from the ground. It's done, Santos shouted. The Blood God Convergence Formation had finally been successfully set up. Maximus raised his head and frowned as he looked at this mysterious form, which surrounded the whole area. Within the formation, Maximus found that his power was being suppressed. Lord Flame's voice entered his mind. Luckily, your combat strength has increased to a terrifying level. Otherwise, you would have been profoundly weakened at this point. As it is, you might only have half of your strength left, however. This statement was reassuring, but Maximus could not suppress the sense of danger in his heart. Bloodstar suddenly stood up and loomed over Maximus as he declared, 
Kid, you're the first person in many years to manage to injure me. But now that the Blood God Convergence Formation has been activated, you're finished. The other three Heavenly Emperors and Blood God City Lord looked relieved. It seemed the formation had saved them just in the nick of time. Blood God Convergence Great Technique! Bloodstar boomed. Ah! A series of miserable screams sounded. Maximus's eyes swept across the scene, and his pupils instantly shrunk. All those who were below the Heavenly Emperor realm had simply vanished, their bodies having become streams of energy that all converged on Bloodstar's body. They were clearly nourishing his overall strength. Waves of terrifying power spread out. Blood energy filled the room. Blood star soul shattering palm, the opponent shouted. Divine flame battle fist, Maximus countered, throwing out a punch. He didn't even raise the divine flame battle fist to the peak fourth level, feeling that the upper fourth level would suffice. Then he fused it with the extreme violet sky fire. The huge crimson energy orb of Bloodstar collided with the purple flaming fist, which wrapped around it. The energy orb's power gradually dissipated. Impossible! Bloodstar roared in disbelief. The faces of Santo and the others from the Blood God army turned ashen. If Bloodstar fell, it would be their turn to face Maximus, and the outcome was obvious even now. The Divine Flame Battle Fist carried an unparalleled power, and it was about to land on the experts of the other side in the next moment. Just then, an angry shout suddenly came from afar. Now, you will face me! A surging blood pillar shot out and collided with the Divine Flame Battle Fist in an instant. A crimson energy storm rolled out. Bloodstar and the others were swept away by the storm, causing them to suffer serious injuries. However, they were still able to preserve their lives. Maximus turned around and saw a middle-aged man wearing a crimson robe slowly walking over to him. His body was covered in cherry red flames, as if he were a messenger from hell. Maximus muttered, Blood God! Supreme Heavenly Emperor. The blood red flame circled around the blood god warlord like a fire dragon, emitting terrifying temperature and an otherworldly aura. The blood god Supreme Heavenly Emperor's eyes landed on Maximus, who felt a surge of fear in his heart. This opponent had been investigating Maximus for a long time, so he naturally knew what Maximus looked like. He also knew now that this was the man who had killed his most prized lieutenants. This alone made him feel a heady mix of rage and fear. How had this freak advanced so quickly in his internal strength base, soaring to such heights in a mere 20 years? It seemed that Maximus made the seven great imperial princes look like mere amateurs. After the shock, a monstrous killing intent rose uncontrollably in the blood god warlord's heart. He had to end Maximus right here, right now. Otherwise, this brat would pose a huge threat to his rule in the future. A young man abruptly landed beside him. It was the transcendent prince, who sized up Maximus carefully. It was this person who had attracted so many experts from the Blood God Valley. What kind of background did this man have? How had he compelled the Blood God Warlord himself to act? In the hotel, many of the martial artists gulped when they saw the leader of the Blood God Valley. They of course heard stories of this figure all their lives, but they had never imagined they would be in his physical presence. The warlord seethed. Kid, you will pay with your life for killing my blood son and blood moon lieutenants. 
He then unleashed the Blood God Flame. Huh. Maximus let out a cold snort. At the same time, the extreme violet skyfire surged out explosively. Purple flames rushed into the sky and mingled with the blood red flames. The fiery forms were locked in a terrifying and strangely beautiful dance. As soon as the two great flames collided, however, the blood god warlord realized that something was not right. He of course knew the terror of his own flame. It had already reached the peak divine grade, the highest level. It would not be a problem for him to casually burn an upper grade heavenly emperor to death. But Maximus's flame was in an entirely different league. Though it was technically inferior to an ancient god level flame, it didn't properly belong to the heavenly emperor grade either. The overwhelming purple flames quickly gained the upper hand. Like a thousand waves, they continued to oppress the blood red flames and then attacked the blood god warlord. The opponent's eyes focused. He waved his sleeves, and the blood red flames miraculously transformed into blood bats that filled the sky. The densely packed blood bats would make one's hair stand on end. The shrieking creatures then blocked the extreme violet skyfire. This was one of the warlord's most formidable attacks, the blood bat wild assault. It had already merged with the blood god flame, and the power it unleashed was extreme. Maximus did not have the slightest fear, however. He merged the divine flame battle fist into the extreme violet skyfire and sent out a strike. A violent flame swept out, setting off an energy tsunami. Maximus and the Blood God Warlord retreated simultaneously. They were forced into a sorry state by the impact of the backlash. They were like twin peaks, both standing at equal height. Then, with a low shout, the Blood God Supreme Heavenly Emperor unfolded his most powerful divine body. In an instant, he stood nearly ten feet tall. Blood Flame Divine Fist! the giant shouted. The blood-colored flames were like a surging river that covered the horizon as they rushed toward Maximus. It was obvious that the blood god warlord had unleashed his most powerful attack in hopes of finishing Maximus off quickly. The power of this punch was infinitely close to the power of a true peak supreme heavenly emperor. The transcendent prince's eyes sparkled as he mused. Ah, smart move. The Blood God Warlord has hidden his true strength. With such power, he definitely wouldn't be at the bottom of the Heavenly Emperor ranking. Maximus's facial expression changed as well. The power displayed by his opponent was slightly stronger than what he had imagined. He took a deep breath. It seemed like he wouldn't be able to win this fight unless he revealed his true strength as well. Extreme Violet Skyfire! Fuse! He shouted. The Extreme Violet Skyfire gushed out from his energy center and quickly merged into the Sun Flame Body, Divine Flame Battle Body, and Golden Immortal Physique. Maximus's internal strength base level immediately rose to the limit of the Supreme Heavenly Emperor grade, then slightly surpassed it. Divine Flame Battle Fist, he continued. The explosive power of this move was shocking as it merged with the Extreme Violet Skyfire. This was a true transcendent grade divine skill. A majestic, seemingly endless tyrannical power erupted from Maximus's punch, sweeping across the universe. Under everyone's shocked gazes, the Blood Flame Divine Fist of the Blood God Warlord dissipated in effect, then became powerless. Seconds later, the Warlord was sent flying. The hairs on the Transcendent Prince's body stood up straight. His pupils shrank. He thought aloud, So powerful! Who is this man? Where did he come from? Meanwhile, 
the blood god warlord was shouting in rage. Damn it, you bastard. He had a hideous and terrifying expression as he roared as he stepped on the sea of blood and soared into the sky. Blood god convergence technique, he screamed. Every warrior in sight vanished into thin air, transforming into pure energy that then went rushing into the blood god warlord's body. He was now truly monstrous as he stood at 15 feet. At the same time, his aura had expanded to a truly shocking level. Rat, let's see how you're going to defend this time. The blood god supreme heavenly emperor screamed. Then he opened his mouth like a giant frog and spewed out a blood red divine flame. The transcendent prince retreated over a thousand feet. A trace of disgust flashed across his eyes. He could hardly look at the blood god warlord in this grotesque form. After that, the transcendent prince turned his head to look at Maximus. His expression was complicated as he discoursed in his head. I didn't expect that outside of the seven great princes, there would be someone who had comprehended a transcendent grade divine skill. Yet even the extermination prince's divine skill can't compare to this guy's. At this point, he was becoming increasingly interested in Maximus. Oddly, he was intrigued, but not jealous. This was because he had completely misjudged Maximus's age, thinking it was impossible that Maximus was a young man like him, and instead that he must have been an elder who had cultivated for tens of thousands of years. Of course, he found it strange that he had never heard Maximus's name before, but it was not as if this continent was devoid of super geniuses who liked to keep a low profile so he didn't think about the matter too much further. Blood flame divine fist! The blood god warlord shouted again. A tidal wave of crimson flames swept toward Maximus, who used the divine flame battle fist to defend himself. The heaven and earth shook and the stars lost their luster. A violet rumbling sound echoed throughout the Blood God Convergence Formation. Maximus kept retreating, trying to neutralize the impact of the attack on his body. The Blood God Warlord was not in a good state either. In this exchange, the two of them were evenly matched. The Blood God City Lord and the other Supreme Heavenly Emperors were shocked. Their great leader was in a tizzy, running around in circles and shouting wildly. Great Blood God Convergence Technique, he screamed. With that, the Blood God City Lord and the other Supreme Heavenly Emperor powerhouses howled out in agony. Unlike the weaker martial artists from before, they were able to put up some resistance as the energy was sucked out of them. Bloodstar took a deep breath. He was the most loyal of the Blood God Warlord's followers and he would gladly give his life for his sect. Further, having witnessed Maximus's awe-inspiring strength, he knew there was no way any of them would survive. So why not increase the likelihood of his master triumphing? This was the sect's only chance for revenge. Why are you struggling? Transform into the power of the Blood God Warlord! He shouted at his peers. Then he grinned hideously and launched an attack. The four other Supreme Heavenly Emperors could no longer resist. Before they could utter a word, they had transformed into pure energy. Streams of red light flowed into the Blood God Warlord's body, and his aura expanded once again. He was now even more frenzied. Clearly, he felt intoxicated by the stunning increase in power. Everything had happened too quickly. Maximus hadn't even had time to stop it. 
The punch that he had thrown had indeed just arrived in front of the blood god warlord. <laughs> the opponent snorted coldly. Then he transformed the blood god flame into a huge red orb that collided violently with the divine flame battle fist. An unparalleled blood red flame storm swept out and wrecked havoc in the sky breaking through the purple flame before arriving in front of Maximus. Divine Flame Battle Seal, he shouted. The purple battle seal was like a barrier, blocking the blood red storm from harming him. Yet the flame would not relent, and soon the seal began to crack. Within minutes, it had been crushed. At the same time, the blood red storm didn't have much strength left. Seizing on this fact, Maximus combined the Divine Flame Battle Armor with the Extreme Violet Skyfire. Divine Flame Battle Fist! He shouted. His expression was solemn. He didn't dare to hold back any longer. The power of the peak fourth stage was completely unleashed, shattering the space in front of him. Two monstrous energies kept clashing pushing the power of the Divine Flame Battle Fist to its limit. Maximus slowly regained his momentum, but he was still far from gaining the upper hand. If this situation held, perhaps both sides would suffer heavy losses in the end. The Transcendent Prince hid far away. He mused to himself, It's not impossible for the strength displayed by these two to reach the top 30 of the Heavenly Emperor ranking. That said, it's clear the Warlord's opponent is superior in every way. The Transcendent Prince looked at Maximus with a changed expression. Naturally, he could feel that the power of Maximus's divine skill had increased once again. At the same time, Maximus now had to admit that he had underestimated the Blood God Warlord. Or rather, he had never assumed that his opponent would display a trump card like the Blood God Convergence Formation. A sense of relief arose in his heart as he thought to himself, Thank God I didn't venture into the Blood God Valley. There, the Warlord would have had even more martial artists to extract strength from. In the hotel tavern, Nandrew and Talita were frightened by what they saw. Their faces were deathly pale, and they felt sick to their stomachs. Nandrew stared at Maximus as he thought to himself, Our lord set up some sort of barrier around us, Talita. Otherwise, we would have been sucked into the Convergence Formation. We should be thanking our lucky stars. Outside, the Blood God Warlord was still high on his own power. Die, kid! He shrieked. The blood flame divine fist had expanded by who knows how many times. It was as if a spark had descended from the heavens and given it new life. Nine flames fire tower, let's go! Maximus suddenly shouted. With his current strength, he could activate the tower without at all eroding his divine essence. The fire tower was like an emperor descending from the heavens emitting a suffocating power. Under the terrified expression of the Blood God Warlord, it actually suppressed the Blood Flame Divine Fist. The one who is going to die is you, Maximus said coldly. The fire tower emitted a dazzling purple golden light. Like a terrifying beacon, it surged forth. The Transcendent Prince gasped. This move, would place Maximus among the top 10 in the Heavenly Emperor ranking. The Blood God Warlord could no longer resist and was completely suppressed by the Nine Flames Fire Tower. The purple golden light of the tower devoured the opponent and killed his soul. Whatever remained, Maximus kept so that he could later nourish the white bone token. Of course, he also took note of the items left behind in the Blood God Warlord's storage bag, 
as well as the storage devices of the other heavenly emperors he had defeated. Over the years, these titans had accumulated tremendous internal strength resources and essential crystals. As Maximus scanned the contents of the storage bags, he was in fact a little taken aback. Then, thinking of his current status, he sighed before musing. Alas, I'm already at the medium rank of the Supreme Heavenly Emperor realm. There's little use to me here. Part of him had hoped to find an Emperor-grade essential crystal in the storage devices. But he understood why none had been left behind, for surely such a treasure would have been refined by its owner right away. There are a lot of internal strength resources, but almost all of them are of the blood attribute. All right, I'll go to the Blood God Valley later to see if there are any other treasure suitable for me, Maximus concluded. Even if there aren't any, Given how long the Blood God Valley has been accumulating wealth, its collection will definitely be rich. It will be enough to increase the strength of the Supreme Sect over the coming century. After pondering for a moment, Maximus prepared to bring the Concordia siblings to the Blood God Valley. The valley no longer had any top experts in its ranks. It was now far less intimidating to Maximus. As for the Transcendent Prince... Maximus completely ignored him. It seemed now that the Blood God Warlord was out of the picture, the whole issue of their alliance was a non-starter. Thinking back to the rumors about the Blood God Valley and the Pinnacle Sect, Maximus naturally had some guesses about the Transcendent Prince's character and motivation. Naturally, he was unwilling to offend him. Of course, this wasn't because Maximus was afraid of the Pinnacle Sect. In fact, he relished the idea of testing his strength against one of the legendary Seven Princes. But right now, he had another mission to complete, and he was not one for pointless distractions. Friend, wait, the Transcendent Prince ventured when he saw that Maximus was about to leave. What's the matter? Maximus said with an expressionless face. The divine essence in his body was at the ready. If something went wrong with the Transcendent Prince, he would launch a thunderous attack. However, what the Transcendent Prince said next surprised Maximus. Do you know anything about the profound Phoenix miniature world? In two months' time, it will open again. And I was wondering whether you wanted to team up and enter together. Team up? Not interested. Maximus announced. He didn't want to get involved with princes. The Transcendent Prince's face stiffened. He never thought that Maximus would be so rude to him. He enjoyed an impeccable status and reputation throughout the Forbidden Ancient World, and would certainly be considered among the top 50 powerhouses in the realm. Under normal circumstances, he would have been furious. However, the combat strength that Maximus had displayed just now had frightened him. Therefore, the Transcendent Prince took a deep breath and regained his smile. Then he pressed lightly. Friend, are you really not going to consider my proposal at all? Or is it that you are not interested in the profound Phoenix miniature world? You should know that although that realm has been explored by many great warriors... Some great treasures remain. Among them is the Holy Heavenly Monument. He paused for effect, then went on. This monument can help people comprehend powerful absolute arts, including transcendent grade divine skills. I couldn't help but notice that your own transcendent grade divine skill relies on a divine flame yet the divine skill itself could be improved even further. Just imagine the results if you did so. Really, sir, are you not at all tempted? Maximus squinted. To be honest, although he had guessed there were exceptional opportunities in the profound Phoenix miniature world, he had not considered something as game-changing as the Holy Heavenly Monument. Just hearing about the effects made Maximus's heart palpitate. 
He could not help but imagine the result. If the purple cloud divine arm or the profound dragon transformation could break through. He mused to himself. More generally, I bet this sight will help me understand the next realm and break through. Thinking of this, Maximus nodded at the transcendent prince, then commented. Thank you for informing me, your majesty. However, I don't see why I wouldn't venture to the holy heavenly monument myself. I don't really need to be part of your team to do so, right? The transcendent prince revealed a smile, then added, Since you are interested in the holy heavenly monument, I would advise that you accept my invitation. Otherwise, there's no way you'll reach it. What do you mean? Maximus uttered in a suspicion-filled voice. The transcendent prince shook his head as he discoursed. It seems you really have been so focused on cultivating that you've not learned basic facts about the world. The profound Phoenix miniature world is a magical place, but it is also deeply unpredictable and strange. The transcendent prince continued his discourse on the profound Phoenix miniature world. You must understand, it's sort of a free-for-all in there. Even those whose aptitude is not top-notch will find unparalleled opportunities to rise in their internal strength base and catch up with those above them. This naturally causes competition and anxiety. Once some rogue cultivators or geniuses from small factions obtain some kind of heaven-defying treasures or inheritance or opportunities in the profound Phoenix miniature world, they will immediately rise up and replace the older generation and become the new crop of experts. He took a deep breath, then concluded. The factions that rule the forbidden ancient world, such as the Burning Heaven Palace, rose to prominence through such a battle of wills. But what do you think the rulers of the older generation will do to stop the younger generation from surpassing them? Maximus's expression darkened. He had already guessed that these powerhouses had a way to block disciples of certain sects from entering in the first place and assuring their own disciples got a place instead. That way, even if the members of the younger generation experienced great success, they would at least be from the same sect as the elders. One rarely lived out their lifespan in the forbidden ancient world. Instead, battles were constant, and powerhouses almost always fell in this way. In the past, supreme heavenly emperors who had made it to the 15th, 16th, or even 17th level of the Origin Tower had fallen in this way. This also meant that there was a constant vigilance of potential threats. If a member of the younger generation seemed capable of supplanting one's power in the future, then that young person was in constant danger of being assassinated. In other words, it was quite dangerous to display great potential. And Maximus was no exception. He now understood that if he entered the profound Phoenix miniature world, he would automatically be a target. The transcendent prince still had a smile on his face as he looked at Maximus's changing expression. Hoping to seize the opportunity, he went on. There are only seven five-star powers like my sect in the entire inner region. All of them are overlords of the realm. In the profound Phoenix miniature world, the seven five-star powers will be able to send the most representatives among all the sects. And we seven princes, who represent these factions, will form our own ultra-exclusive team. He paused to make sure Maximus was following along, then went on. There will also be some five-star powers in the miniature world, but they cannot send as many representatives. For example, you should expect only one martial artist from the Blood God Valley to enter. Maximus now understood the situation fully. If he allied himself with the Transcendent Prince, 
he would have a much better chance of gaining entrance. If he tried to enter as the representative of the Blood God Valley, his chances would be slim. Surely, that faction would choose one of their own citizens. The Transcendent Prince went on. Your combat strength has honestly reached the peak of this world. It is close to the top 10 of the Supreme Heavenly Emperor ranking, but you are still not quite there. Plus, you have no reputation yet. Once your exceptional strength is discovered, you will have a target on your back. It would be much easier to get rid of you now than to wait until you have risen in prominence. Maximus's eyes sparkled. What other outcome could there be? He would definitely be hunted down by the top 10 of the Heavenly Emperor ranking, among many others. It seems that you have understood, the Transcendent Prince declared. He then ventured. If you join our team, you will be completely protected. You should know that my father is the leader of the sect. He is seated fourth in the Supreme Emperor ranking, and he is known as the Eight-Legged Lightning Emperor. One had to know that this rather strange name came from the fact that when this martial artist deployed his divine body, he could extend eight legs that were as sharp as knives. The effect was quite deadly in combat. Even the top three on the Heavenly Emperor ranking did not dare to say that they could defeat him one-on-one. -on -one. Maximus could hear the hidden meaning behind Transcendent Prince's words. If he didn't agree, this guy would probably leak the information about him to his powerful friends. Is this a veiled threat? Maximus challenged. His eyes seemed to contain some kind of storm. A violent aura and heavy pressure were pressing down on the Transcendent Prince. The Prince's expression changed slightly when he personally felt the pressure coming from Maximus's body, but he still smiled and said, I am simply offering you an opportunity. A pretty unique one, now that I think about it. Maximus's killing intent gradually faded. He stared coldly at the Transcendent Prince for a long time before he spoke in a flat tone. All right, I agree to join your team. However, I still have some matters to attend to, and I'm afraid that I won't be able to follow you right now. Tell me when and where we should meet, and I'll be there. <laughs> I look forward to your arrival, the Transcendent Prince commented casually. After informing Maximus of his plans via divine sense, he soared into the sky and soon disappeared from Maximus's sight. Maximus took a deep breath and flew toward the Blood God Valley. The surviving powers of the Blood God Valley had indeed organized a strong resistance. One of the medium-grade Heavenly Emperors had used the Blood God Convergence Formation to boost his strength to the extreme and was now equivalent in strength to a supreme heavenly emperor. Maximus once again felt glad he had not ventured into the valley at the outset. It was undoubtedly a dangerous place. But after descending, Maximus made quick work of the remaining powerhouses. After that, he gathered Nandru and Talita and left Blood God City. He then summoned the Warcraft creatures and asked them to guard the siblings as they left the inner region and returned to the outer region. As for Maximus, he stayed behind to make preparations for entering the profound Phoenix miniature world. With the Time God tool, Maximus's internal strength base reached the limit of a medium-grade Supreme Heavenly Emperor a month later. He absorbed a Blood Flame Fruit, and the Nine Flames Fire formula advanced from the middle of the 7th level to the late 7th level. The power of the Extreme Violet Skyfire increased once again, further propelling his overall strength higher. In fact, because of the Time God tool, the breakthrough itself happened nearly instantaneously. 
The remaining time was used by Maximus to adapt to the sudden increase in strength, as well as the sudden increase in power of the extreme violet skyfire. However, in just over 20 days, he was unable to fully adapt. On the surface, Maximus's internal strength base was at the peak of the medium-grade Supreme Heavenly Emperor realm. But in reality, Maximus did not have full control of this power. He estimated that even if he had five years to focus on this progress, it would still be difficult for him to fully adapt. And if he wanted to completely control his new strength level, the time needed would double. At this point, he only had 60% of the strength of a true peak medium grade Supreme Heavenly Emperor. However, Maximus's divine essence had evolved to the upper grade sovereign level, surpassing his internal strength base. This made up for the gap somewhat. Apart from that, because the blood flame fruit had the blood attribute, the extreme violet sky fire had become somewhat impure. In order to completely remove the trace of blood energy from it, a certain amount of time was needed. Overall, Maximus's strength had increased a lot during this one month long period of seclusion. However, it had also brought along a trace of hidden danger. The profound Phoenix miniature world is about to open. I can't wait any longer. I'll need to worry about these issues after the miniature world has closed, he thought to himself. Maximus soared into the sky. Suddenly, huge dragon wings spread out from his back. After he transformed into the eight-winged profound dragon, he became a ray of light and disappeared into the horizon. As one of the seven five-star powers in the inner region, the Pinnacle Sect ruled an extremely large territory with a thriving metropolis as its center that served as the Sect's headquarters. This installation was surrounded by the Pinnacle Mountain Range, which appeared like an endless series of mighty peaks. Looking from the sky, these buildings were all connected together, densely packed. When Maximus arrived at the mountain range, he was immediately stopped by the guards, all of whom were at the Heavenly Emperor realm. Maximus took out the token that the Transcendent Prince had given him before he left. The guards who blocked Maximus immediately showed respect and let him pass. Maximus hadn't gone far before the Transcendent Prince heard the news of his arrival and flew over from a mountain peak. He laughed loudly and commented, Brother Alexei, you are here. You are the last of the team to arrive. I'm not late, am I? Maximus queried as he cupped his hands at the Transcendent Prince. With this internal strength base and the eight-winged profound dragon transformation, Maximus's speed was ranked among the top for heavenly emperors. Even so, it took him quite some time to sense the pinnacle sex location from where he was in seclusion. There were only about 10 days left until the profound Phoenix miniature world opened. No, no, you came at the right time. I was just talking to the others about you, the Transcendent Prince stated casually as he waved his hand. After a few formalities, he led Maximus to a mountain peak where he lived alone. Along the way, the Transcendent Prince introduced his team to Maximus. There weren't many people on the team, but all of them were experts. None of them were low-grade heavenly emperors. The weakest among them were medium-grade heavenly emperors, and many of them were at the upper grade. If it wasn't for the Transcendent Prince's extraordinary talent and incredible combat strength, as well as the fact that he was the son of a sect leader, these upper-grade heavenly emperors wouldn't have been so easily persuaded to join his cohort. Of course, if they didn't join the prince's team, they wouldn't be able to enter the profound Phoenix miniature world in the first place. That was perhaps their prime motivator. Soon, Maximus and the transcendent prince arrived at a mountain peak. This peak was like an immortal realm 
brimming with divine herbs that under normal circumstances, even the mightiest martial artists would battle over. The landscape was dotted with exquisite pavilions and picturesque ponds. The transcendent prince brought Maximus to a large hill. As the monumental double doors opened, more than ten figures appeared in Maximus's line of sight. Each and every one of them was emitting powerful divine essence auras. Come, come, the last member of my team has finally arrived. Everyone, welcome him, the transcendent prince announced. Immediately, a sparse clapping sound was heard. It was respectful to the transcendent prince, but the clapping was not enthusiastic. Obviously, these people did not really recognize Maximus as the sensation he was. As he hadn't fully grasped his own strength, even with the Nine Flames Fire Tower and Lord Flame, Maximus's aura fluctuation couldn't be concealed. Naturally, it was easily sensed by the many heavenly emperors present. Huh, his aura is so unstable. It seems like he has consumed some kind of heaven and earth divine fruit. How can it be a match for a true peak medium grade supreme heavenly emperor like me? One of the geniuses present mused to himself. Among the dozen or so people, six upper grade heavenly emperors were sizing Maximus up with proud expressions. They had the right to look down on medium grade heavenly emperors who were weaker than them. Maximus observed these people at the same time. The Transcendent Prince's team had a total of 15 people. Very few of them had just entered the medium-grade Supreme Heavenly Emperor realm. Most of them had reached the peak. And of the six people who had reached the upper-grade Heavenly Sovereign realm, four of them were truly extraordinary. Three were at the first tier, and they were not weaker than experts like Blood Sun and Blood Moon. The other one was at the top. The last two upper-grade Heavenly Sovereigns were both at the peak of the Supreme Heavenly Sovereign realm. Maximus naturally fixated on these two. They were the only ones who could force him to use all his trump cards. One of them was a woman, dressed in exquisitely tailored robes. She was extremely noble, and her silver hair cascaded down like a waterfall. The man's appearance was a bit rough. He had short red hair and gave off a fierce feeling. The man was called the Cyan Demon Emperor, and the woman was known as the Divine Mirror Empress. The Cyan Demon Supreme Heavenly Emperor was a blue demon beast with a Chaos Divine Grade bloodline. This made him even more arrogant than he would have otherwise been, given his internal strength base, as he looked down on both humans and demons. In fact, he had received many invitations from other demon forces, but they were all rejected by him. Unfortunately, though, in the forbidden ancient world, his Chaos Divine Grade bloodline was not exactly useful, for he of course could not unleash its full potential. At best, this prestigious bloodline increased his strength a little. But no matter how fast he was, he could not advance an inch when he reached the limits of the Supreme Heavenly Emperor realm. Therefore, although he had a noble bloodline, the Cyan Demon Emperor's combat strength was only average for his level. What was more remarkable was that he possessed innate Chaos Divine skills. He had already started cultivating one of them, and although he had not yet fully mastered it, he could still unleash it to a level that made it equivalent to a transcendent grade divine skill. The transcendent prince had spent a lot of time and effort convincing the Cyan Demon Emperor to join his team. Yet his goals did not end with the profound Phoenix miniature world. He indeed hoped to befriend the Cyan Demon Emperor and convince him to become part of the Pinnacle Sect. Maximus retracted his gaze from the Cyan Demon Emperor feeling pity for the man in his heart. If this were not the forbidden ancient world, with his Chaos Divine Level bloodline, once he used his divine body, 
he would be able to unleash a strength comparable to those at the top 10 of the Heavenly Emperor ranking. But he was like a race car stuck at the starting line. Still, he knew the Cyan Demon Emperor could ultimately challenge the top 10 on the Heavenly Emperor ranking, and it seemed likely he would face violent battles in the miniature world. If this man refused to join the Pinnacle Sect, who knew if he would survive? Indeed, he no doubt needed the protection of other top warriors. Of course, Maximus knew he was in the exact same position. Yet he was also confident in his own strength. As long as he had a fortuitous encounter in the profound Phoenix miniature world and stabilized his internal strength base, or even improved it further, he might not be weaker than the Eight-Legged Lightning Emperor, as long as he deployed the Nine Flame Fire Tower. All these thoughts flashed across Maximus's mind in an instant. Then his eyes fell upon the Divine Mirror Empress. A strange look flashed across his eyes. This was because the Divine Mirror Empress wasn't a human or a demon beast, but rather the weapon spirit of a divine weapon who had taken on a human form. It wasn't that Maximus hadn't heard of such a phenomenon before, but it was exceedingly rare. Further, this typically only occurred in the context of immortal tools, whereas it was clear that the Divine Mirror was merely a Chaos-level tool. After the Transcendent Prince's explanation, Maximus finally understood the situation clearly. It wasn't that the artifact's spirit had transformed into a human. Instead, it had separated a portion of its consciousness and seized a human martial artist's body, which it then inhabited. Because of the gradual transformation after the possession, the Divine Mirror Heavenly Sovereign was able to transform into a replica of the illusory Spirit Divine Mirror, which was roughly equal to the power of a top-quality divine weapon. The Transcendent Prince went on. Of course, this was a brilliant move. However, there is also a downside. Once the portion of the soul inhabiting the human body has evolved for some time, it will split from the original artifact spirit. If the Divine Mirror Empress ever leaves the Forbidden Ancient Realm, she will have to destroy the original artifact spirit. Otherwise, she will never be able to advance. Maximus continued to size up the crowd as they sized him up in turn. After a while, a middle-aged man who was at the peak of the medium-grade Supreme Heavenly Emperor realm walked out. He first cupped his hands at the Transcendent Prince, then said, I know you value this Maximus Alexi guy, but you must see that his realm is extremely unstable. To be honest, it is dangerous to have such a figure as a companion. He will be a liability, and his behavior will be unpredictable. The Transcendent Prince smiled and said, Divine Wrath Warlord, you have underestimated Brother Alexei. He is not as simple as he looks. Even though his internal strength realm is unstable, he will still be one of the strongest martial artists on our team. Rest assured. The Prince had not enumerated Maximus's battle achievements at this point so his words shocked the Divine Wrath's Supreme Heavenly Emperor. He sneered as he shot back. Sir, comparing him to yourself just seems like folly. Please forgive me for not believing this simpleton could contend against an upper-grade Supreme Heavenly Emperor. The Divine Wrath's Supreme Heavenly Emperor turned his head and glared at Maximus. His eyes flashed with a strong desire to fight. The meaning that he wanted to express was obvious. The Transcendent Prince also gazed at Maximus, but he still had a faint smile on his face. Maximus cursed in his heart. The Transcendent Prince must have been doing this on purpose. First, he praised him fiercely in front of the other party, but he didn't mention his specific accomplishments. This would no doubt sow the seeds of conflict. Maximus could also guess the prince's motive. 
Although he was one of the seven great imperial princes of the inner region, it was common knowledge that he had the ability to fight beyond his level, even if he had not yet reached the peak medium grade of the Supreme Heavenly Emperor realm. There was no way he could be favorable compared to the six upper grade Supreme Heavenly Emperors on the team, two of whom were at the peak. In the Pinnacle Sect, these people were reverential toward the Prince's father and thus displayed unwavering respect. However, in the profound Phoenix miniature world, everything was uncertain. Maximus understood now that this was all a matter of testing strength and jockeying for position. Taking a deep breath, he declared, I'm willing to go head to head with any of my fellow team members. <laughs>